Hello. Hello. Hello, my baby. Hello. Check. Check. <laughs> Just there is a delay, but there we go. Oh, you te I tested my too. We'll see. Hello. Okay. Uh, it seems okay. That's probably good.
That's probably good. I suppose they'll let us know if we're too loud. The people. Why the people. Here we are. Hey, there. Oh, <laughs> here we are. Happy 2024, everybody. The Click Vortex boys are back. The boys are back in town. My mic is a little... I feel like I can hear too much of my mouth noises. It's starting to gross me out. Do you want me to... Uh, do you want to pod that down a little? Nah, it's all right. We're, we're, deal with it. we're in it. We're new in year, it. New year, new me. I'm tolerable of my own disgustingness. New year, new Sam. Same theme. Yeah. I didn't change that. Astrologer. Same hoodie. Same. Oh no, you don't. Have, you have a dew jacket. It looks green there, but it's brown actually. It's true. The thing is a, a chameleon. I like that. The, yeah, that's that's the Jason Woodbury story. Looks. Looks green, but is brown. You're all kinds of desert. brown, but it's green. You're like a desert, like a beautiful desert landscape. I remember one time, I think that part of the reason why I tend towards the colors green and brown is because I had a a, a boss who was like, you always wear green or brown. And I was like, that's not true. And then... And then you're like, I'll show you. I'll I'll show you. (laughs) I'll show you. I'll show you. And now I do. I'll show you right. I'll prove you right. Hey, we got got the crew. We got some folks here. We've got got Mark. We got Mark We've got P. TK. We got VP, Bob. We got Bob VP. We, we got Mark B-U-Z. <laughs> we got Tommy K. And we're all here to talk about what? CDs, notes. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see all the people who signed up for the uh, record fair. Un- just like unliked. Unsubscri- like, ne- hey, guys, we're not going to make it after. Yeah. All. Oh, yeah. Speaking of the record fair. What about it? <laughs> we just... Said record fair, but people may not know what that is. That's true. We're hosting one here. Yeah. You got to, people might not know this, probably the people watching do or listening, but um, we we tape Click Vortex up in the loft studio of Hello Lincoln. It's a big building, and there's a whole space where you can hold things like record fairs. There's going to be one. Yeah. On February 10th. Yeah. Um. Which yeah. is pretty exciting. We pretty got all exciting. sorts, of, all sorts of local stores and labels, and some cool. We got zine. Zia. We got Stinkweeds. We got Sly Vinyl. We got Grace Records. We got Moon Records. We got. Uh, we got uh, Skull Valley. Skull Valley. We got uh, Trill Hip Hop Shop. We've got Fluke Fanzine. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Central Records doing refreshments. Oh yeah. I'm looking forward to those refreshments. Me too. And Hello Merch is gonna have a little, a little. Uh, pop up too which is going to be hello cool. merch is going to have a little pop up wasteoids will have some some wasteoids stuff wasteoid stickers wasteoids shirts probably some wasteoids we got a couple we got a we got a cassette tape we got a cassette tape we got a light cut a couple yeah. couple of we those can maybe sell, we can sell those uh 400 special goodness records we still have yeah we're going to sell <laughs> hopefully all probably of them. sell all of them we're at that one clear those out guys no, we actually we don't have that many we sold a lot of them mostly we sold well, we sold well, uh, that's going to be exciting. We've also got, before that, on February 3rd, the Super Duper. Super Duper secondhand sale. Anita's doing that. we got Anita in the mix. She's Good morning, house, Anita. Yeah. Uh, she's going to be hosting a really cool vintage swap. You've got the Culture Shock event after that. you got, like, events are just. of cool stuff happening. Events are, ha- I heard live performance from the refreshments. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep, we got him. We got him, folks. It's just going to be me playing a chopped and screwed remix of the, uh, king of the hill theme for f- four hours yeah. but it'll be like yeah yeah i love i love roger klein uh yeah do wait wait <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't sure maybe maybe is, this, is there a rodent burrowing in the probably right. probably uh well it will be super duper anita is right and uh and speaking of super duper it's a brand new year and uh this is the year where click vortex is gonna really take off this is our super we've been acquired year. by spotify we guys yeah, we're right. so happy to announce we sold the podcast to hello fresh no i'm just kidding 
My the no, oh, never. It's a dumb story. Okay, I took anyway. <laughs> it took my mom, I think, like six months of me working here to realize I didn't work at HelloFresh. Oh yeah, okay. same with the dude at my bank. That was the boring story I was gonna tell. Was it really? <laughs> yeah, I, I can like, just you're read your mind. HelloFresh. It's like, mm, yeah, yes, actually. Yeah. Now give me that loan. <laughs> uh huh. We're a hugely successful meal kit mm-hmm. company. Uh, well, guys, today we're talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, compact discs. I wanted to talk about CDs. I'm always, I always <laughs> want to talk about CDs. <laughs> what, Le- <laughs> Lean Boom Hauer and the Alley Wastoids. I don't even, oh yeah, now I get it. Yes, King <laughs> of the Hill, refreshments. Took me a second. We're, to, we are, we're working on a slight delay here. That's true. So your guys' jokes, well, each one of them is absolutely they, they land hilarious. Just a little bit later. They land just a tiny, a tiny bit later. Um, but yeah, no, I wanted to talk about CDs because because they're, they're it's cool. it seems to me people are under the impression that perhaps they're making some sort of comeback or there's a CD revival underfoot. Um, you think so? Well, that's that's what we're here to determine. Uh, and I the the thing that sort of um, inspired this for me was the, the folks over at the Guardian uh, earlier Sponsored this week. By Capital One. By yeah, <laughs> yesterday actually. <laughs> Uh, they there's a here's a, a headline from the Guardian. It says CDs shine as UK music sales in 2023 jump to a near record figure. Wow! So I saw that. Hey boners. <laughs> hey ma'am. It's good to good to have everybody here. Um, there's other CD revival talk afoot, and and uh, I've I've got one here from uh, the folks over at Axios, and they had said something along the lines of Gen Z are buying CDs. And so before we get into the the nitty gritty of whether or not it's actually taking place, I was thinking, does your daughter count as a Gen Z? Is she, is she Gen Alpha? What are, what are the... I think she's, I think she's Gen Z. Gen Z? We just had this conversation. I should remember. We went through the whole thing because I was trying to figure out if, over Christmas if my parents were boomers and they're, they're not. Are they... They're older than that. <laughs> Great, gr- greatest <laughs> generation? or The what? silent generation. The silent generation. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, which, I don't know. Are, I don't know are, are, they, are they silent? They're not, silent. <laughs> They're not silent to you? No. Uh, well, does 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 Lola like CDs? Does she give a shit about compact discs? <laughs> uh, Probably no, not. No, I don't think so. I don't even know if she knows what a CD is. Well. She likes, she has a record player, but she doesn't give a shit about those either. She, she gave me all my records back. Okay. So you had given her records and then she gave them back? Yeah, she was like, uh, that's a, she was, you know, she t- was turned 13 and wanted to have a teenager style room. She was, <laughs> grew, was growing out of her, her childhood room. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's barely Gen, Gen Z. Okay. Um, and one of those new items was a record player and she bought a few records. We got her some records and then I let her raid my, my record collection. She, she took some cool stuff and then. I recently was reorganizing my my record collection. She said, "Do you want to take those back because I don't ever listen to them?" Sure. And I was like, "Yeah, I do actually." Well, so she doesn't. She's not so big on CDs. CDs haven't haven't really. No, she still um, uses the old uh, iPhone to listen to tunes. Oh yeah, streaming. Well, that's she's actually a that's actually part of what makes this so interesting. So this Guardian piece, by the way, was written by. Sarah Butler, I want to make sure we're crediting our folks. And yep. just to uh, to recap it really quick, it talks about how CDs sales rose last year for the first time in two decades, helping to lift, and this is UK numbers where she's reporting on here, total spending on music to the highest level since, since, since the days when Destiny's Child, Limp Biscuit, and David Gray were topping the album's charts. Last year? So here's the thing. Uh, our friend... Uh, He's not a friend. We know him. We've He's I've talked enemy. with him. He's not an enemy. Oh. Damon Krakowski of oh. Galaxy 500, one of the uh, oh yes more notable dudes who writes about music, labor practices, copyright, uh, all of this stuff. In addition, of course, to writing some of the best songs ever, um, you can always count on him, Damon, to uh, throw a little cold water on uh, hype if if the hype is unjustified. Yeah, and he very correctly very correctly points out that um there's a a a graph a few paragraphs into this story that 
spells it out a little bit more directly. So you're saying they buried the le- they buried the lead. They might have buried the lead a tiny that's bit. A, that's an interesting <laughs> tactic I've never heard of before. <laughs> it says while the number of CDs continued to fall by almost seven percent, that marked a dramatic improvement from the twenty percent slide in 2022, and was the lowest rate of decline oh. since 2015. Sounds like they're taking a, a page out of the old <laughs> like government economics book. <laughs> right. So what you might say as opposed to CDs are are back is CDs are less gone, uh, maybe. But I think what's interesting is that there is still value to be gleaned from this Guardian piece, which is essentially that uh, for some Gen Z fans, particularly people who are into uh, artists like Taylor Swift, a lot of times these numbers uh, reflect like one release from an artist, right. right? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it does seem that Gen Z... Uh, are picking up CDs more uh, more readily than previous, in part because they want to buy a piece of physical merch, but they don't want to buy a record, which have gotten very expensive. Well, Gen Z, I have a lot of uh, 10 song CDs, if you want to buy them. I think I bought a thousand of them. I think I have 998 of them still. So Perfect. If you want them, I have them, if um, you want to pick those up. The uh, my record when it came out uh, in 2022, the uh, is that when it was? Yeah, I got asked for CDs and I did. I hadn't made any, uh, and I still haven't made any. But I should have. Then. You should just take mine and put yours in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new. Yeah, just like glue, get some um, a glue stick and like glue some new things over it and. Yeah. Well, oh, the there day. you go. There you go. Yeah, a lot. As everybody as upcycling is well, that's what it's all about, and I do think that um, CDs are interesting because they're they're one of those formats. Anita uh, already alluded to tapes being still a thing for her, and I do think tapes and vinyl have that more retro quality. But I I, I wonder if we're going to get to the point where CDs have that. I I, I think I read an article. I probably should have found it for this, but I'm also lazy, just like my daughter. Um, it was. It was an argument against why CDs are not going to come back because there's a very distinct tonal quality to vinyl mm. records. Vinyl records um, really don't the the sound doesn't really get worse over time in any way. They're very durable. Right. Um, there's right. A, there's a very long history to them for the for nostalgia purposes and collector sure. purposes. Um, similarly with, with tapes, they have a very distinct sound, right? They're a very distinct, just physical good. Yeah. Whereas CDs are just digital, purely digital files. It's they're no, it's totally, they're no different than an MP3. It's exactly the same thing, right. more or less. Um, they don't really, they're not very durable. They don't really last like people th- thought they would would or might when they would you know say that these cds would last 100 years or whatever yeah it's turning out to not exactly be the case so right i think it it, they probably will come back for nostalgia purposes but i doubt they'll come back in the same way that like records and yeah that's i mean and that's my take via this article that i read I, i i agreed with them yeah as anita says if only fry's electronics was open that's another thing that uh that that made me want to talk about this is that best buy just announced that they're getting rid of their discs totally they didn't hear that cds are declining seven percent less than they were last year yeah and they're even getting rid of dvds and blu-rays um which wow. are are discs but obviously not uh solely music uh and what then are as, they selling anymore <laughs> i mean is, i guess what best just, i have i drones? don't know probably drones drones and computers drones uh and they've got like two guys whose job it is to run this entire huge store, you know, just run around with iPads. One guy sells stuff and one guy sells the warranties. Right, exactly. As Anita also mentioned, I don't even have a way to listen to CDs in my home or vehicles. Now that is important because, um, you know, laptops don't have CD drives. Yeah. Um, mo- most new cars don't come with CD players. Your, your car probably has a CD player, right? My car does have a CD player. Both of my cars are CD equipped. I wish I still had a CD player, but I'm a fan, especially of CDs in the car. That's like probably my favorite place to listen to them. But yeah, I like my friend Ian went, maybe he's still going through this phase, but he liked the idea of CDs in the car because, or just CDs in general, because it similarly to why you would like a, a, a vinyl record is because you have to listen to 
or you're more inclined to listen to the entire thing you instead of just sure mindlessly shuffling through some random things like a radio station um, although what I will say, what was really interesting to me is as I started putting stuff together for this, and I'll, I'll get this queued up in a second, one of the things that people were talking about when, so CDs are, whether or not they're coming back, I think that they still represent a really interesting time in the music industry. One, because they were so cheap to make uh, compared to even records. Yeah. Uh, that didn't stop them from cranking up that price, did it? No, they <laughs> they were uh, tremendously overvalued in terms of their sale price. You know, yeah. they. I remember probably at the height of things, like you could be paying like twenty two bucks a disc. You know, twenty. I feel like I ever remember some up in close to thirty. It's it's very it's very possible, and and that's that's really interesting because they also uh, were sort of the 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 most in vogue format during this huge huge boom for the music industry where everybody was making so much money yeah um but they didn't start off that way they started off as a strange curiosity and i went and found some kind of fun news clips from the early 80s 1982 is when cds got uh introduced and i I think we should maybe uh maybe tune in to see what it, what it was about CDs that had people so excited that they might they might be a, a good deal. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Let's here we go. And this is the tiny laser that does all the work. Mm-hmm. A small low power semiconductor which emits invisible infrared light and plays the record from inside out. Check out how cool this little animation 12, is here. Thousand times. This is what the surface of the compact disc looks like. You can see the thousands of tiny pits and grooves which the laser has cut into a thin plastic sheet. When it's monitored or it's like read off by another record. laser in the playback machine, <laughs> the lengths of the grooves and the distances between them give varying light patterns, which are then picked up by a tiny diode. That and animation is so much cooler than CDs disc, in general. This is totally proof against fingerprints and dust because the information right. is stored <laughs> underneath a plastic film. It doesn't really matter how much I manhandle that particular disc <laughs> It will still I continue disagree. To well, hang on, because it's about to get... This is a one-sided disc. On the other side, simply the label of the record. Let's the take it over to the and BBC the now. the signal is sealed into a plastic sandwich, the new disc should be more resilient than a conventional gramophone record. Well, let's give it the breakfast time test. Wait, what? Some honey. Nice and oh, the old breakfast time <laughs> test. <laughs> Smear mm. that over liberally. Make sure it's... Nicely spread around that. This guy's putting honey on the back of it. This guy's coffee. making me nostalgic Hang on. for my CD at breakfast I used to have. <laughs> now get this. This is the part I've watched this clip a lot. Look at the rag. It's right into the bowl. <laughs> right. So why is he doing this? How it sounds. Oh, he's gonna test that. How do you think it sounds? Aaron just came up. No way. Uh, okay, right. so according according to that guy, uh, it worked, it worked perfectly, even though it was covered with honey There's a and zero coffee. percent chance that that was that was I true. Don't, I don't know. All I know is that this guy on the BBC, he really, he really believed that that was <laughs> that I just tuned in. You just turned into the old breakfast challenge, and so I was looking at this and. People were, one, uh, they were convinced that these things were going to be so much more durable than records. And the truth is, CDs, it turns out, aren't that much more durable than records. In fact, they're a little bit finic- more finicky, I would say. Yeah. Um, but when I was watching that dude smear honey on the back of that disc, it had me thinking about, Do you did you ever try any, like, uh, CD remedies? Uh, I remember... My buddy Zane had a, a, a Five Iron Frenzy, a Christian Ska CD there. Great band. Um, Shout out Chris Cardinal. He had a, a Five Iron Frenzy CD that got, it was really screwed up. And I remember him uh, putting toothpaste on it and like rubbing the toothpaste. And I that was that supposed to. for my zits. Really? Yeah. <laughs> toothpaste? Well, it does. I think it does dry stuff the out, toothpaste right? Toothpaste is basically the Bronner's. It's right? basically Bronner's yeah. of. Or in the Browners is basically toothpaste, I guess. One yeah. way or the other. I mean, it does yeah. say I can use it to wash my teeth, I think is the term they use, which yeah. I really like. Uh, anyway, so CDs. Uh, Did it work? 
did it work to the toothpaste the toothpaste no oh, it okay. didn't work where did he hear that i don't remember On i just remember him saying the schoolyard it. i just remember him doing it and i wondered did anybody else do that did anybody else try to fix because he also um he gave me his copy of weezer's blue album when it wouldn't play uh, through a few songs so i had a, oh, a bummer. i had a disc that like most songs worked, but I think. Do you remember which ones wouldn't? Play? I think Surf Wax America didn't okay. uh, didn't uh, didn't play, and uh, but also I think that uh, Only in Dreams Ooh, skipped, bummer. which was a big. That was a huge problem. Uh, this of course prompted me to buy my own copy, which um, I I did. But yeah. So yeah, two things that were mentioned here. I specifically remember Fries Electronics before it was Fries Electronics. It was Incredible Universe. Yeah. On baseline in the i10 or oh, something yeah. over there and i bought the weezer blue album and i do remember going back to my dad's office playing it on my sony discman that did have the anti-skip protection right tommy um and just playing it so much like over and over and over and over and over and over again it's i mean that's something that is i mean i was the same way i listened to and i mean i remember like when i got kind of into music when i really got into music i probably had like a total of i don't know five cds you know what i mean so yeah. it's like i'd play what the, was your first cd do you remember i remember the first cd that i ever uh got um was uh, uh, on my own at least because i i stole some from my dad course. i think um, but the first CD I ever got on my own was the Oasis Don't Look Back in Anger CD single. And on the, uh, I almost said on the B-side, on, si on track two, <laughs> <laughs> as we're discussing CDs, not records, uh, on track... Previously unreleased. Uh, yeah, the, uh, it was a cover of uh, Quiet Riot's uh, Come On, Feel the Noise. Oh, God. Um, and uh, one, I remember loving it, and two, I remember... Come on, feel the noise. Uh, it was spelled C U M. Sure. Uh, and I remember. One of our neighbors had a sign on their door for their holiday party <laughs> that said that. It was like, come on in. Come on. And we were like, oh, yeah. No thanks. <laughs> I, uh, I remember being vaguely scandalized by the title of that. But oh. yeah. But at the same. Yeah. How about you? What, do you remember your first CD? The first CD I stole from my. I think I stole it from my. It was either my mom or my dad. It was Eric Clapton Unplugged. <laughs> and yeah. I was really into Tears in Heaven right. for some reason. I guess yeah. probably everybody was. I, I just saw a, big a video song. of him a couple days ago. Somebody posted um, him performing that on some interview. He just like randomly picked up guitar on the couch and just started playing it flawlessly. And although Eric Clapton sucks, and I, I don't really like him, I've never really liked him. Right. I did have a moment with that song and that soundtrack, mostly because I didn't have a lot of options. Right. I, that was one of them. It was that and then, you know, like a James Taylor CD, which was also <laughs> great. And James Taylor, I think I've mentioned, was my first concert I went to. Yeah. Um, Tim is right, by the way. Come on, Feel the Noise was a Slade song that Quiet Riot covered that Oasis also covered. Oh, wow. So, okay. So we can go all the way back. But Clapton was I – had, I had – I borrowed or stole – I think it was, I think it was called the cream of Clapton, which yeah, is a, which is funny because he borrowed and stole everything his entire career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I had that one too. Uh, I remember g getting that disc from maybe my. I remember my grandma and grandpa were in the uh, the Columbia house. Oh, I did that. I I got in a lot of trouble with that. Oh, I got a lot of trouble. Really? And I got a lot of good CDs from that. Yeah. Did how did you do it? How did you? What was I had your a fake name, and I did the, the one where you tape the penny to the thing and you send it in, and I just kept using different names. I did that pretty often for were, things like I just would see on TV or. Were you they using were giving the away same thing free? I would just use different names. Were you using like the same address though? Yeah, but they weren't catching on. They weren't very organized there at Columbia House. No, believe it or not, um, it was basically just like I think a, some sort of racket, one way yeah. or the other. I do remember. Um, it was a way to. It was a definitely a racket by the record labels to get um, numbers. Oh yeah, because they would just- For their charting positions. Because they could, I think they could count um, yes, they sales- could. That's the whole thing was fabricated by the Sold records. to Columbia Music House for distribution. Yes. And then of course you would get whatever, whatever discs they were trying to, right. to move millions Plus of. Plus just like clearing dead stock and- Dead stock. Like, it was actually a really great thing for them and people who were just getting music for free and then selling i mean you know then 
later in life selling all those to Zia Records and I remember Columbia House the way you could always tell if somebody was trading in Columbia House stuff is it was a Red Hot Chili Pepper CD <laughs> is that there's there there was no barcode oh yeah it would be barcode less right, yeah and so I remember there was sort of like when I when I worked at the when I got promoted to the trade counter at Zia I remember the thing was sort of like hey um, don't uh, you know just be careful with these that don't have barcodes because you'd think oh yeah well this is a, a, a classic cd or whatever and then you'd go out on the floor and there'd be like 45 of them pre-owned yeah because everybody got the same same discs yeah we did that i remember i i with a friend um i remember coming up with a fake name but we used his address so i felt really safe in the whole the whole deal do you remember your fake name no, I think it was some weird combination of our two names, which was not. One of mine was Crisp Cri- Swan- Swanson. <laughs> Crisp Swanson? Yeah. Wow. I know. It's a good one. That's I pretty, still use it today, actually, on a few things. That's pretty uh, That's pretty, fa- pretty fascinating. It's Crisp. a good one. I remember getting the Ramones uh, anthology, the two disc, through Columbia Music House in high school. Nice. And I remember, But it did count for remember two selections. Remember how exciting it was to get that little cardboard package in the mail? I'd run down to the mailbox and just... Every, check the mail and just be so disappointed if there wasn't a little cardboard box. I remember my grandparents having been signed up, they would just kind of end up with, uh, with CDs they didn't really care about. Yeah. And so they would let me take them. I remember there was a, this Marilyn Manson CD, Jason. I don't feel like I ever got anything that cool, but I definitely remember getting, um, the, uh, I, they had the best of sting. Ugh. I think it was called Fields of Gold. Yeah. I took that one from them. Uh, and then I feel like there must have been a, ju- a jewel, jewel CD, uh, Pieces of You. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure my uh, <laughs> my cousin Megan stole that one. Yeah. And, uh, Megan. Yeah. Yeah. Megan got Meg got the old the jewel jewel. I know that I got like a, at least one CCR greatest hits. That's a good one, though. That was that is a good one. Yeah, I, I like Credence. Credence a lot is of a great. Don't like Credence, but I think Credence is actually a great, great band, great band. Um, uh, but yeah, that's the other thing about the CD boom, right? Was that people had to rebuy discs that they already had. Um, yeah, because as as they transitioned away from records, people were like, "Well, I got to buy the." There's even a joke about a uh, joke about it in Men in Black. How CDs Tommy were just Lee such Jones a pain is, in the ass, though. And then, I mean, and then like yeah. getting your collection, and then keeping that collection as your backup, and then converting everything to to your, digital your once Zoom you or whatever your iPod or whatever you had. I had a weird one. I had a maybe Marco will remember what that was called. Marco, do you remember what the 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 little MP3 player we had on tour that was like silver with the blue screen? I can't remember what it was called. It wasn't a Zune. Somebody had a, a Zune, but I had an even goopier, more generic one. I. I don't. I don't think. I think the I think first. Marco had one too, actually. Yeah. I think that the first like uh, player I got was a uh, uh, was a was an iPod, which I do remember like buying a CD, ripping it to my iTunes, yeah, dragging it over to the. I iPod mean, getting icon. an iPod was like oh, that next was, level once you got one of those. Oh yeah, it, it was. It was incredible. As Decoy says, free record sampler CDs shaped my youth, and uh, similar. It wasn't the Zune, Tim. I I. It was like the Zune, but it was something else. It was, uh, man, it's gonna drive me crazy. Hopefully, Marco can 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 fix this so that yeah. you can be driven less less crazy. Yeah. Uh, record samplers were important, of course, because they were cheap. What were record samplers? Or CD, like CD, just like a label, like uh, oh, like a compilation, like a comp, comp, compilation, comp comp, 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 a compilation, a compilation, a compilation. Yes, no compilations were. Yeah, we and we've done. We have an episode on compilations. We do, and and they are those were very pivotal. Oh for, yeah, to our youth, very very important stuff. Um, but yeah, so I was just thinking. I found myself thinking about all these, all the CD lore, and uh, I mean, real quick, let's. How about we? Um, I want to let's. I don't know if anybody can hear this guy backing up, but probably, he, probably, probably. Um, let's see what's the happening. Zen, that's what it was. It was the Zen. The Zen. But yeah, it was. It was like the generic Zune. Zune. I don't know who made the Zen. Do you guys remember? So CDs. Uh, do you guys remember long boxes? Yeah. So I was gonna say, 
but <laughs> nice. How did um, that happen? That Nirvana long, Nevermind long box was the first CD that I ever purchased on my own, and I bought it at Costco. You remember? Bu- somehow oh, my mom wow. Let me buy it. it was pro- actually probably my dad, because I don't think my mom would let me buy it. I, a CD like that with the kid's wiener on it. <laughs> but that kid, uh, my dad that, let me get it. That kid keeps trying to sue Nirvana, <laughs> yeah. uh, for real. Yeah. Um, so long boxes were, uh, long boxes were when, when essentially records were still the main, the main way that people were buying stuff. CDs represented a huge problem to retailers because they were, they didn't fit in the cases. Yeah. Like the, in the, the established, um, you know, stuff. So these long boxes would be, uh, were tall and, uh, and you could actually flip through them or whatever. Uh, as, as, uh, Tim says this year, Dr. Dre's chronic came out as a long box on record store day, black Friday. That's cool. Yeah. And a couple of years ago, Metallica did the, uh, the, I like garage days. Bonks. Yeah, it's weird. So, so I didn't realize this, but did you know that long boxes were sort of controversial uh, among some some folks? Uh, Peter Gabriel, Peter Gabriel was like against long I mean, boxes. It was a huge waste, and then after the and so then they got rid of the paper, and they weren't as cool. So then they had the like the little piece of plastic right. that it would hold in, and right. so it would still sit up tall. Right. I just I liked that style, and that was that was better because they would pop it out and they could reuse those. Right. Exactly. Those classic things. And I, I actually, I was, I was going to mention long boxes too, cause I prefer that style of, of looking through a CD because no offense to Zia or other record stores. It was basically the best option. Yeah. While they were very much more compact and easy to store cause CDs were tiny and you could just put them on a shelf. Yeah. Like these books, it, they're tough to find. Right. Because uh, unlike books, they're much smaller. No, for sure. So it was, that was part of the fun of looking through CDs because you could very easily miss something and then find it the next time you were there. Oh, yeah. But it also, like, kind of sucked. <laughs> oh, it sucked, yeah. yeah. And to organize that, I mean, I can't even imagine. I never worked at a record store, but you certainly did, and that was probably a huge pain in the butt. It was a huge pain in the butt. And then sometimes stuff like when Tools, uh, the album, uh, 10,000 Days or whatever. I talk about that, too. I'm Wait, glad we're back on the same, that case? same page here. You're talking. You're going to talk about yeah. the. Uh, well, I'll. I, I won't. Uh, I, mean, I was going to talk about it too much, but I was just going to talk about packaging mostly. I'll. I'll let you talk about that, but I will just say that because it was non-standard packaging, it, it represented a, a yeah. pain in the ass. We had to do You'd have to put those on top, top. We had to do top facing, yeah. and then we just have boxes underneath. But there was another. Does anybody remember? Does anybody remember this? These things. Yeah, I was going to talk about these too. <laughs> these are. Th- <laughs> Three inch discs. Um, this yeah. is uh, this is just from an eBay uh, listing for Donald Fagan's Century End, Century's End. Um, but yeah, this is a three inch disc. I never actually had. Oh boy, look at this. I yeah. So I the you first time one. I saw one of these was the No Effects, the Decline CD. It was a three inch. They used to do the three inch disc, and then they would have clear plastic, so it was kind of like a picture disc CD, but. Here's all you need is love, baby. Your rich man Japanese single, whoa, on a three inch disc, dude. So this was okay. First off, this looks so cool. I bought cool. this in Japan. I have a, I have a few of these actually. Did you? Okay, so the Hey Jude single. So a couple things. One, it says it's mono, which is cool. Um, probably didn't have to be mono, but but yeah, was I don't know for whatever reason. From, I don't know if this is from a box set thing or what. I just I randomly saw these at Tower Records in Japan. This is so cool. A couple trips, last trip. Uh, since since you all can't really see this, we'll put up a, a proper photo. Yeah. With the with the blog when we put put it up on Thursday. But yeah, I remember my uncle uh had had some of these these three inch discs, and you had to have a little uh, adapter, right? To yeah, like or some put like my that. mom's CD player. She had a little countertop sony player and if it had a tray sometimes the tray would have a a three inch sure little bezel thing or whatever you would call that yeah but it would have a little three inch thing so you could you could spin these smaller ones i just remember he had like it was like a little plastic it was like a disc extender and you'd put it so that i guess so that that would work with like top loaders or whatever yeah, um how cool would be so that's really cool i think that i think that like all those different uh kind of like weird weird ways that these uh existed and because there's i think that there's some things that like 
CDs work better for certain for certain like kinds of music or certain listening experiences. Yeah. If you don't want to like flip things around, uh, you know, then a CD is is the way to go. I I also found these and this was I don't I didn't know what was going on with this, but have you ever seen one of these? A record CD. This is a record CD here. So it's like record on the outside grooves and then a CD on the inside groove. Um, I feel like I've seen one of these, but it was a record on the top and a CD on the bottom. I think maybe. it could be. A, a Tim sang here, The, the Locust the had Locust, one. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. What I I found, there's a it's a great uh, kind of like weird. I know. Maybe The Locust was the. The three know. three inch Might have disc. Been a three inch thing. Somebody, oh. somebody had one of these though. These these record the like record CDs uh, vinyl disc is what this one is called. Um, but there's also these folks in Tucson uh, called uh, people in a position to know, and they did uh, they did a really cool uh, some some CD vinyl combos where you can even play uh a seemingly a, a cd with with the needle but yeah so chris is saying he's got one that is cool the no effects one yeah i just sent it to you this is one of my favorite. i just like the the picture disc vibe of this one i thought this was really cool i always wanted to do this but then never could convince anybody that the money was worth it I, also i think it was you couldn't really do it on a full length this this clear picture disky three inch thing with plastic because um it had to be a single or something. Here, I'm gonna. It's too expensive. I'm gonna pull it up. Computer CD trays had. Yes. Tommy Casper. I think it was most CD players that had trays that had just the trays that came out or the top loaders. So here's what we're talking about here. That is really cool. You said this was the decline. Yeah, that's the decline. So it was totally see through, on the outside edge, and then they printed that on top. I thought that was always really cool. And that's a. Uh, I would love to do that. For those, someday. yeah, I think it's a really awesome. cool. It, you just got to come up with a, a was the decline like a 15 minute 15 minute uh yeah i just recently listened to it because it's it's um whatever you feel about no effects or fat mike it's a it's a great song <laughs> it's a great song it's got some pretty killer lyrics that are very uh in tune with what's happening today all i remember is the punks had it right people let's just you know i just recently talking about the cd era this is the only way that i remember this existing was a cd um I saw somebody talking about how they were like, why didn't they have any, uh, why wasn't there any, any protest music during the Bush eras? And it was like, well, there totally was <laughs> like, uh, especially yeah. and it was punk. Was it called like punk against Bush or rock against Bush? I forget what it was, but it was like, and I remember, uh, I remember fat wreck selling a, a, not my president shirt. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, there was, there was some, some punk protest for sure. Uh, as there were others too. I remember Bright Eyes had a protest song when the president talks to God and some other stuff. Yeah, people forget. Keep losing. People testicles. forget how much everyone hated uh, Bush. G Dub. G Dub. I was there. I remember. Yeah. But somehow that guy's been redeemed. I don't know. I, I want to. He's got his cool paintings. Maybe that's it. I think it's those paintings it's of those horses. Really cool paintings. <laughs> uh, I'd buy a CD of all his horse paintings. Yeah. Um, uh, Dequa here says the Dillinger Escape Plan had a CD that had a vinyl track embedded on the top yeah, that's, of the CD. That's the one I was thinking of. Whoa. I knew somebody had, had one. That is, as Bob says, that's wild, and I agree. That's really wild. Some wacky wild stuff. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know if, like, you know, I'll tell you where else CDs seem to have been a little bit more, um, have a little bit more cachet is in the, like, the K-pop world. Korean pop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just went to Japan, and CDs were very much a thing there still. Well, so CDs in Japan specifically, K, they had an entire floor dedicated to K-pop because you know those are and those are like and they're like big cases. And J-pop, usually. they tend to be like a, like a big bo- almost more more like box sets. Yeah. Which, There's by the way, cool stuff there. I'll still I'll still buy box sets, uh, CD CD box sets versus vinyl box. You're a box sets. set guy, and I knew you were, and I knew you'd want to talk about it. Oh, I, I yes. have yet to to crack this bad boy open but it's the nilsen cd box set this is the nilsen rca collection and i'll tell you what i have is uh um this is from if i remember right that came out in like 2013 or maybe nailed it 2013 i um i remember getting a uh they sent me 
promo, but it was just CDRs, and they were in. Yeah, they were nice. in those. Uh, <laughs> they were in those. Um, like uh, it was. It was so CDRs, but it was in the plastic with like the slight. Uh, it's almost like what a surgical mask would be made out of, or like a, a hospital gown. Do you know what I'm talking about? That kind of like yeah, soft. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Whatever yes. that is. That like meshy. Uh, so fabric-y. I. So I and I kept the CDRs. <laughs> I still nice. have them. Um, but yeah, CD. I mean, that's a great box set. Um, I always would. I would. I usually will default to the CD box sets for like the Dylan bootleg series and all those, which I I do love that. Set. You open them and you listen to them. Yeah. See, I tend to just leave them fully because <laughs> I don't have a CD player. And that's I, probably why. But it's one of those things where it's like I I do want this, and yeah. I know it's like the Beatles box sets that I've never bought because they're always. By the time I realize I do want it, they're just like crazy expensive. So sure. I just never get them. So the Nielsen one I, I bought. I think Actually, it's. A, I think I bought it and let Toko borrow it and he lost it or something. So he bought me that one. He, he re, re- I think it. I think it's the way to do it. I mean, I also think that you know, having some physical media makes a certain amount of sense because, even though CDs are just digital, um, that you know you can't count on like a streaming service to keep everything that you want to listen to. Yeah. And so having cds makes a I certain amount of sense just CDs. as a just as a yeah I, I never got rid of my collection i wanted to find them i wanted to come down here we were going to come down on sunday and go through my crap because i have boxes somewhere oh and, and my cd because that's something that you know like the something i wanted to talk about and this may be a good segue for it is the the cd booklet yeah let's talk about that car. for sure like i had a jumbo you know like the jumbo the big one i had a lot of cds and case logic yeah and reorganizing those I was a big organizer of those. I like to, I had that very neatly organized and filed and would redo them often. Would, would you put the liner notes? Yes. You'd take them out of the case and you'd put them in? Put the liner notes in and then I'd put the CD. Although people would say, that's stupid, you're scratching it. That's why this has the... Right. Because that, that also had the fabric-y. It did have that fabric back on um, it. Yeah. But then sometimes, sometimes they would have, well, so then what I would do is I would put it on the other side of the page they put the cds on this page and then the back side but then you could keep less yeah and it got way heavier so then i think ultimately i would end up just getting rid of all the booklets and just putting the cds in oh see the booklets are so crucial to me i'm a booklet guy i mean granted i'm talking my car this is like (laughs) my car one it's heavy it's bulky yeah things are flying out yeah you don't want i guess that's a lot of what i i could imagine uh kids getting into like the cd booklet thing you know what i mean like decorating it making it their own i could i could see that happening i could see that being a, an entry point for gen z uh fans yeah who want to have like a kind of a personal personal thing you could i remember one friend was um was doing what we were talking about where you take the cd you take the liner notes but i remember he would even open the tray and he would put the back too Oh wow! So that he could have it's hardcore, he have everything, and that's how uh, we discovered uh, that Weezer's Pinkerton has that's a map, map. Yeah. has a map printed on that. And I remember he opened it and was like, "Look!" That was a cool little. It's a pretty Easter cool. Egg. It's a pretty cool thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, one thing that's really funny is the way like as vinyl has become more and more, uh, you know, in vogue, and and they they do pressings, um, is how people will buy you know vinyl pressings of certifiable cd albums like i i did this i bought one of one of the it wasn't i didn't have a cd i had a tape of the wallflowers bringing down the horse mm-hmm. um which was obviously a big hit record or whatever but i i bought it on vinyl a couple of years back and i realized i should have just bought the cd because they literally just master it from the cd right like they don't have there's not it's like not a master. master for vinyl. It's not yeah. mastered for vinyl. They just right. they took the CD stuff, and so I found myself thinking like, I could spend you know twenty five bucks on this record, which I did, or I could have probably just spent like twenty five cents on a CD <laughs> or whatever, yeah. which I should have. Which and you still uh, could do. I still could. I still could. You could have both. Well, that's 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 pretty good stuff though. Pretty good stuff. These uh these um these cases. I love the last review in the attic. Oh Javier, thanks for chiming in with that that's a good one uh if you're if you're looking for something to watch after we get done adam green i think we got i think it's one of my favorite i i love salvador cresta's midnight music review in the attic which way so presents once a month 
uh, an insane video created in an actual attic in Argentina. Um, and this this week, when just the other day, we published him in conversation with Adam Green talking about the cool movie he made with Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, I got to watch that. that Zoe looks so Kravitz. Great. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so check that out uh, along with all the other cool wasteoid stuff. But yeah, um, you have you you were in a band uh are in a band that was certainly there at maybe i guess probably closer to the end of the cd era but still very much very it was in the cd era for yeah definitely closer to the end but still very much part of it what was that um want me to pick up that cd for you with my discount <laughs> yeah i need Get i need 25 cent cd I'm for gonna, 15 cents i need i need i need the hook up I need the hookup. Um, but getting the shakes over here for this Wallflower CD. Yeah, I just got 17 cents. <laughs> it's my favorite Cure album, 17 cents. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, I'm curious what your guys' experience was like with the format in in terms of CDs the CD. Were great. I mean, it was cool. Like in the band, it was it was cool to be able to make it, CDs were accessible, so they were easy to make. Yeah, you could you could make a do a run of CDs um, through disc makers pretty quick a couple hundred bucks pretty quick yeah if you knew what you were doing it the only the only thing that was hard was the art stuff but i i learned how to do all that so it got pretty easy yeah there. but um uh yeah it was cool i was a fan of the the digipack that's why i used um disc makers in particular because they had the cool digipack the first format ep was a digipack for people who don't remember digipacks are yeah th- did i bring one they're like the uh I always remember thinking that the the name of it was weird that it was called I brought one that I did for for Nate's oh yeah CD um, yeah and this had this was fun I got to go a little crazy with the packaging here and I had these that's great the vinyl was even cooler but I had these 12 cards that were very obnoxious and then I hit a weird freaky picture of him under that oh I love this see. yeah 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 lots of hidden stuff but yeah, I love the Digipack because it it felt like a like a record, like a record. I remember Digipacks being uh, a huge a huge deal, and this is like yeah, you get the inner sleeve, you get like the pocket, you can add there's the two kind. I mean, there's a, the kind that's still the cheap ones that we had to use the slim line or whatever. The, they still had the jewel case plastic On insert, the, right? Those I I I hate, but had to use those for a while until budgets got a little bit bigger, but. Then the other version was just like the slip case like this, where you could just slide it in the side, much like a record would be. That's right. Um, yeah. But yes, I mean, CDs were great. Also, yeah, burning CDs, like the, the band right before that, Anita, Anita spent a night burning the only 50 this past year CDs ever to be in existence. She burned them, and we had them on. I found these or, orange, speaking of Fry's Electronics, like orange slimline cases and then we just hand numbered one of 50 tpy it's just fun to do that for a show and then they never you never made them again so i mean i think that was the that was a really very accessible extremely accessible and i think about cdrs how there is probably a whole i know i mean i was in a band and we made cdrs for shows and would hand number them uh make different art and yeah oftentimes I mean the special goodness CD that or record that we well right they did that many versions of that they did a bunch of different versions where they were I mean because CDRs like you said they they were so it was so easy to make something and you could have like a special release for that show and I think there's like a lot of bands that probably put stuff out on CDR only and but what sucks about that is those depending where you got them if you got them at Fry's Electronics they can be really cheap right bundle those things would fall apart like crazy. Like the you'd get the like foil the, the foil to off the top. Off. Yeah. Well, t- Tom Tommy says talk more about doing Nate's artwork. We all know about <laughs> CDs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, come on, guys. You don't know all this talk that we're we're talking about. Artwork is. On I'll you. talk more about. Yeah. Uh, I will. I'll talk more about artwork in general. Did you feel like artwork for? I mean, that's one thing that I think that vinyl has on CDs. Let me get my 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 bag of tricks here a target bag full of props i think they still sell discs at target currently yeah, do they I'll, still sell cds at target they do they probably do yeah and vinyl even. i wanted to talk about packaging mostly because yes oh, let's i'm, talk I'm about a packaging. i'm an advocate for cool packaging yeah and yeah like nate's record um uh, 
was one where I had to I had to fight for the spend on that to do the cards, especially on the vinyl. There was like Velcro on it, so it was crazy. Oh, cool! Um, Dog yeah, Palms was go. a big one. So the first the first format record, Interventions, is just on a, a regular and just in a regular jewel case, which made me absolutely <laughs> mental. Like you I were could, bummed out. I could about barely that? handle it. It made me. I could not believe that they would not let us get a digit packet. It, it made me sick to my stomach. <laughs> um, so the next time we put out a record, I made sure to spend not only the budget that we would have had for a digipack, but also uh, more every other penny <laughs> that we would ever have for this stupid dog problems idea. But it was fun. I mean, this was like a cool thing, like a die cut. And I liked when bands would, would just go the extra mile with the CDs as CDs were starting to, you can't see any of this, can you? But as CDs were starting to become not very cool. Right. I thought it would be fun to, to do trying to get like, so people can see the accordion effect of all this. It is really, it adds like an element of, Plus you, plus you did like notes like in the different, that's, that's such, that's so cool. It's not super cool. No, it is cool. <laughs> I, I think it's very cool. I thought it was cool for, at, for a minute, but I don't know. No, it's great. I, I could have done it better. But anyway, the, uh, just little things like when I was 16 I, and I got Pinkerton, I opened it and there was this smell because it oh, was I love on this smell. paper, yeah. on this reverse stock paper. And the way the ink sits in it, it's just very, it feels like a record. It's matted. It has this like distinct smell always. And just those little things were, were important. Like I know that that, I mean, that sounds so weird, but no, that was a, that was actually a thing with, with CDs is you just would get like a broken jewel case that sucked and the center thing was broken. But then every once in a while you'd get something where there was like a, a tactile or a, yeah, or just a, just a different physical, experience. Physicality. Like, this to is it. crazy. This brings a whole new element. This isn't just like, there's nothing I hated more than just getting a CD opening. It It has a little two page black and white inside. Of course. You know, color on the outside black. It's like the cheapest thing you could ever, you could ever get. Yeah. Um, when people really put some effort into their packaging, it, it was, it was fun. It um, makes a huge difference. I remember specifically the, uh, specifically having the, Smashing Pumpkins album, Machina, The Machines of God. And it was on that that cardstock you're talking about, that like matte. Yeah. And I remember it smelled. So they, they did like a really serious job with the ink and the pressing on that yeah. one. And I remember the smell of it being like a huge, I felt so cool. Some cassettes I remember had that same Oh, I love smell. that. It's very, yeah. dis- I don't even know what it is, but it's just very distinct. It's the Weezer thing. It's like some cassette paper it's, it's just it must have been the type of ink that was used in, in these things but another thing that drove me crazy in the early 2000s and um i found i found an, an atlantic version of this snails, of snails the f- is the the stupid fbi warning <laughs> on the back that no one can see but i'm sure everybody or most people remember there was i can't even tell you how hard i fought <laughs> to not have this fbi warning on a on basically a you know like a promo cd they still oh, no. made me put it on it's so hideously stupid and and ugly the fbi warning was like the the scare tactic to get people to think that they were going to go to to prison if they if they ripped this cd yeah the, they'd show it it would be before uh v, vhs tapes too right like when you're put, watching a movie the it shows you the fbi warning first yeah it's just so totally stupid i and, remember and it didn't work of course <laughs> You mean people didn't uh, decide? Oh, I I'll, I won't make copies of this. People CD. didn't immediately burn the CD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked about this a little bit before we started rolling, but uh, CDs they around the Napster era, the major labels did team up and they they started putting copy protection software on CDs, so that when you would try to burn it, it wouldn't it wouldn't work or right it would give your computer a bad virus, which is the what DRM. happened, the DRM yeah. stuff, and they got in big trouble. <laughs> you wouldn't download a car, <laughs> would you? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, they, You probably I, could now. You could probably you 3D pr- print one. You could probably 3D print a, a, a Mazda. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's such a such an insane thing that they tried to, to prevent people from, from using these discs. That's what makes CDs good in my opinion uh the ability to take the digital files and yeah, put them on your, up. on your computer you could back it up and if you it's and, yours you should be able to do whatever you want with it and in the ipod age yeah exactly you would put stuff on your ipod you wouldn't download every single song from the itunes music store you could use your own 
disc and then have it on your computer. So yeah, yeah, that's definitely something that I like. There were some other cool packaging things. Like I really like the double CD jewel case. I I didn't like regular jewel cases, but I like the double CD, like the the white album, the red and blue album, the Forrest Gump soundtrack, the Bob Dylan greatest hits one and two. Do you mean you mean like the, the double the, the real the, fat the fat boy? Yeah, yeah. the real fat boy. It yeah, one open are... this way, one open this way, uh-huh. and then you had books in the middle. It's, those were really cool. Yeah, and much more durable than a regular a the, regular one. <laughs> the uh, yeah, absolutely. No, it's Lars Ulrichs. Look, I'll say this. Lars was, he was half right in some ways. He was also half wrong. And um, R.I.P. to the wizard, too, by the way. I don't and know if we've done all right, all right. Since. We have not done an episode since uh, Lars Ulrich's dad passed away. Um, since the immortal wizard who said delete that uh, and uh, about one of the songs on St. Anger. Great. <laughs> Absolute master. Um, that was a CD. That was a big CD album for sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I liked the double disc. I remember the Forrest Gump one being very big. A lot of people, yeah, everybody had one. Forrest Gump, the Forrest Gump soundtrack. And do you remember, what I was going to say is I like the double, but I don't like the double with the paper flap. So do you remember those ones? I'm sure those were obnoxious at CD stores. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it would be a double disc, but it would still have the like cardboard cover, and they would always get just totally yep. beat up because those, yep. the plastic underneath it would just kind of rip through and scrape yeah. it all up. So you just mean where it would be like a case and you'd slide two jewel cases into that? No, it would be like that's a, I have a I have a it would have a rundown. plastic center, but it would have paper oh, on the outside. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know and what it, you mean. And it never would close, so it always ju- it just would end up being a giant a giant mess. That's the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. Um but the back to the tool thing. So I was going to I was going to point out I didn't I didn't know this, but in 2000 seven or whatever at the year that the the next following year of the Grammys after dog problems came out, my manager was like, Hey, we submitted this for best packaging for a Grammy. And I was like, I did that's a thing. And I looked it up and it was that dates back to 1959 or something. Um, but I, we submitted, it didn't go through, but what did ended up winning that year was the 10,000 days. days art. Oh man. And it pissed me off so bad. Cause despite the fact that I have to be cool with it, cause it was also their guitarist who did that. Um, whatever that guy's name is. I forget. Adam, Adam Jones. Carey or Adam, Adam Jones. Jones, Adam Jones put that whole thing together, it, but it's like, you know, just this like trippy kaleidoscope artwork. And then, and like goggle. built into the package is like a flip goggle yeah. that sits over the eyes of the, the little monster thing on the package. And so as you're like scrolling through the book, it has the two, what do you call that? Stereoscope, not stereoscopic. I forget what it's called, but it has like the two images that when you put the glasses on, it puts them together and makes a 3d image. Um, it was a cool concept, but it was also not executed very well. And I was, I was kind of upset that that won the Grammy, um, <laughs> out of curiosity, I went and just to look to see what other cool records did win Grammys for best packaging. Sure. And back to back two years in a row, the Beatles won with uh, revolver and Sergeant pepper, which made me very happy. Just, you mean because the, the cover was just so good. Yeah. They won best. They won a Grammy for best album Pack- packaging for revolver well, right cause which was class form and is a really cool cover and then sergeant pepper peter blake uh, that was the guy's name right yeah peter blake did Th- those are great those are great covers but but like now you you tend to see more of a um that like the novelty ends up getting like you you earn one of these for having something that's like different or out of the norm for yeah. packaging with versus like uh you know, uh, just a really good cover. Another right? one I was, I was surprised to see and happy to see was ghost is, is born one in 2005, oh. which was just normal Fantastic. old CD, but it was a really cool, really, it was some really cool photography. And as Dewan calls it, the egg album, the egg album, the egg album, it's one egg right there took home. Yeah. That's a great one. I'm a big fan of the way, like the label numero group does their CDs. They do really good CD box sets that are, you know, kind of like, They've done they've done a few that are especially good, um, but I like all of those collections. Light in the Attic is also good. I think they've moved away from CDs for the most part, but yeah. I have a really cool um, Lee Hazelwood set that's discs, but it's in like a big velvet case. So yeah, I mean, you can do you can do cool stuff. You can do cool stuff with it. Um, I think with vinyl you get a bigger canvas to work with, but also the more crazy you get with vinyl, per, like the more crazy you get with vinyl packaging, the more unfeasible it becomes. The thing right? that was, yeah. The thing that was tough with CD artwork is it just was so small. So to 
right. lyrics and text. It was just hard to fit everything on a page and have maintain any kind of aesthetic that you'd want to maintain. Um, do you remember these 24 karat gold <laughs> discs? Yeah, I do. I didn't have look those up if you don't remember them, but they, they always had a window. It was like a clear window, window so you could see the gold disc underneath it. And then it would have like a little corner thing of the, with the art. The the Paul McCartney Ram is the one I have pulled up here. I don't know if maybe you can see it here. <laughs> uh, you can't see it because of the thing. Um, it goes right through the. That was the one I always wanted because it just I thought it was cool. But that they this was another scam, just a way for them to you know probably sell them for forty or fifty dollars. I don't know what the, I don't. Oh yeah, it was from the original master tapes. That was the thing, and I think the gold disc was supposed so, to be so the gold disc is, is and it's also supposed to sound or conduct better than yeah. than even a, a standard, yeah. which is goofy because they would do the same with um, although original master uh, Mo- MoFi, what is it, Mobile Fidelity, like yeah. the original master series, those are more known for vinyl these days, and yeah. these days they're more known for the you know running a scam on people. Um, and I got a couple. I got I just went and when I was reorganizing reorganizing my records i found that my friend i remember my friend bought me pinkerton and the blue album on that. the mo- mo- mobile fidelity the mobile versions fidelity, yeah. yeah i mean and they do sound good but they had a whole line of discs too yeah and i think they there's a, a term i think it's super audio or whatever yeah um so you can do all the stuff but i mean it's just the same as as anything else like the more you the more you uh put into it the more expensive it's going to get and so yeah a solid 24 karat gold disc yeah if that's the only way to listen to ram as far as i'm concerned i agree yeah i'm sorry i'm just reading through the comments anita's talking about the double disc so i i thought the doubles were a little bit more durable unless they had the, the paper but i mean she is right if you really beat those things up they could they would just shatter into a million pieces there was nothing worse than when you'd open a disc and the cd would be stuck on the and to pull it out you end up cracking the little teeth yeah. You know what I'm talking about? That happened yeah. to me so I many times. The, the teeth. Oh. The teeth. The teeth. These the, things. Those mm-hmm. teeth are, are a pain in the ass. It was also tough. I got very good at Zia at like uh, getting shrink wrap off really quick. I'm still so bad at that. What I would always do is I would, I would always, because you know they have like the, the sticker across the top? Yeah. I'd always do this number and then I would peel it. Oh, good And move. then you could peel, I would... I started doing that for people when they bought CDs and they were like, yeah. I can I can never, See, cause I, people would always, I don't want to, I'm not going to, I had a similar move. I would just try to, I would get a slit and I would try to open it and then I would end up breaking the, the jewel case. Sure. I mean, everybody would always end up with like half the sticker on the back yeah. still, which was the worst. So, um, and I was going to point out, this was something that I love to find at Zia when I would go to, to CD hunting, it would be super fun when you would find a promo, copy of something so you definitely cannot see this at all but it's this, a that dog disc. this is a promo copy of that dog's retreat from the sun and it, it's great yeah it would not it would, there would be no sometimes nope. they would have artwork or it would just be different artwork sometimes it would be the same artwork but it would have a hole punch in the back of it over the the barcode but the really cool one and i don't know why i always thought these were cool is just if it was just like a a white piece of paper that was just the basic stuff. This is like the yeah. Some critic got you sent send it to that. the record stores. You send it to the radio stations. You'd send it to the, the yeah guys like you writing reviews and stuff. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I like it. I like it for sure. Cool. Not uh, for sale, but didn't stop Zia. They sold them. <laughs> yeah, the not for sale. Uh, they'll end up. They can end up for sale for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As a uh, as so Tommy says, I still have a cutter tool for getting cellophane off CDs. It's a magnetic and stuck to my fridge. That's a good. I, I know remember that. Those. I it's never got the little slice. I've got yeah. I've got a Merge Records one that I'm nice. a fan of. Uh, and Decoy asked if I've got a uh, thing for getting stickers off of packaging, and I do. That's my. You have a trick for that too. I, it's just it's just one of my uh, useless skills. Uh, someday when there's a record store Olympics, maybe I'll compete in the sticker peeling category. But I like Maybe to we do, do that uh, at the at the Cactus Music Market. Oh my God! Can you we'll imagine have a competition the, the, between you and Mary P and <laughs> Lindsay? From get Tim, get Tim in the mix. Get yeah. get Kimber Kimber down here and see if she can get a, a a hype sticker off of a record. I used to you'd take the heat gun and you'd apply a little heat and you'd peel slow and. Wow, you used to make fake checks too. N- no, I never <laughs> did that. Or did I? Or did no. you? <laughs> um, yeah, that's cool good stuff. CDs, man. Wait, CDs but you cool. also got this. Also, I got. The, I mean, this was the last. I just was. I love. I those went through too. My, my collection from what I. I don't have many CDs out and about these days, but I. I have some more interesting ones, and 
I don't remember where I got this, but this was, I did like this. I did appreciate that you can't see it because it's green and it's coming through. But when there would be a jewel case with a paper slip cover. Oh, yeah. I really like that a lot. And that's what this is. This is the point. Harry Nelson, the point. Um, they, I don't even know what yeah. What era this is from or what what country it's from. If It's, it's 2002 from. It's RCA. So, yeah, I don't know. B- Maybe it's BMG Heritage. Reissues. I like it this. be a regular reissue, but. I would like the, uh, yeah, like the super deluxe editions too. Yeah. Those would have like a plastic. I also like, I don't know if anybody can hear the. They would usually have a bigger book. There'd be, there just would be more to it. So I would, I like, I liked anything that had more artwork to, on it. It's like we're doing some, uh, some ASMR yeah. crinkles. I love the sound of the point. Just this disc. I also appreciate, I really like the, that kind of rap too by the way that's huge that's huge in japan yeah the uh, that type of rap i think that's where i actually found this that makes um, sense they do love the they, they don't do use lo- the shrink wrap they use the ones where you can just put it back in gently yeah you have to be careful though because that line of glue yeah you got it you got to get good at it and the seams break if and you're the not seams careful. break if you're not careful i, I did that last, like, when i took the second the first layer of this beetles love thing off i broke it well this is uh, asmr exactly Rec- welcome to Hey, record stores! When you're all here for the uh, the big record fair, let's talk about a ASMR record store ASMR podcast. Yeah, that no cool. no talking, just the sounds of a record store. Tim, I'm sure you, really you come on. <laughs> I'm sure you could come up with a few that are less pleasurable to listen to than the crinkle. Yeah. And I found a long box for Miranda. It's a you can't see it really. But Can you see that? It's a Miranda? Red Hot Chili Peppers long box. I'm sure she had like twelve of them. Oh yeah. Oh, I did want to mention the yes. The import CDs were a big one too for me. And I, for some reason, I think I would find. Oh, yeah. I forget the record store at the mall at Metro Center that ten that seemed like they always. I think maybe they had an import section. Right. And I would I would dart straight for there to try to find the imports from Australia, UK, and Japan. Imports and, were what it was all about. Imports for sure. were so cool because that's where you would find the B sides that you, the previously unreleased tracks. So, you know, like the Good Life import from australia and then it would have a couple acoustic songs or and one some, i forget what else like devotion or something is maybe on that or the japanese imports were usually in the cardboard yeah um, or not usually but often in the cardboard slip sleeves yeah and you'd get like art you'd get like different totally art different you know art. like some sometimes it would be like the cover but you could tell us an outtake from the same photo shoot i loved that i, stuff. I was like obsessed I'm, with it yeah um they were exp- see- REM had a really cool one that I'm just now remembering. It was a plastic back with a just a purely paper cover, and then it had a piece of plastic that you would snap in and out, oh, like cool. a little plastic oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing, and you go, and pop it out, and then the the top would just open. It was that was for like what's the frequency Kenneth or something? Maybe it was on the Monster. That's such cycle. a cycle. I remember that. It's a good. It's a good one. The the world of. The why world? did we not? We didn't really have those in America. Why? Why were imports so big over in other countries? Do you know? Well, they were. They weren't imports there. I know, but I <laughs> just mean like why we didn't have CD singles, really? Did we? Um, I think that we maybe we had some. I mean, I don't feel I like guess my we probably had some. I just don't. I remember them just being kind of like the snails one, where it was just like a often like a, a a thinner sleeve, not really usually, and it would be like two songs, you know. But yeah, yeah there, there seemed I feel to like be if they did, they didn't have additional tracks or yeah, they just weren't as cool as the imports. No, imports were where it was at, and it was such a cool. I mean, it's a, it feels different because the the time <laughs> do it to me every time. God damn those Japanese import bonus tracks. Uh, well, anyway, guys, yeah, CDs. so we could man, we could talk all day about CDs, can't we? And perhaps. We will sometime, but uh, in the meantime, if you... Oh, crap. <laughs> Is that happening? They don't see that. They don't see that. It's okay. I was going to do the phone number, but I, it's gone. I so. was going to... Do you know how I was... I, when I was remembering my Sony Discman player, I was thinking about the anti-shock, I think it was called, oh, on yeah. my thing. And yeah. I was like, why didn't they just... Why wasn't that just always on? Because you had to turn it on. <laughs> you did. And um, I was just thinking last night, I was like, it must have been a battery thing. Maybe it just killed your battery. So then I looked it up to see what that ev- what that technology even was. And do you know? Did you know what that was? The anti-shock? Yeah. No. It, it would just record. It would record. They had a little processor in it that would record. I think it started at, it said it started out at three seconds and then eventually got to 12 seconds. No kidding. And it would record a little bit 
three seconds ahead so that if it skipped, it would kick on and it would play un- 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 uh, uninterrupted. That's nuts. I didn't yeah. realize that. But it was like a, a battery killer. So that's why that's it wasn't it, just always on. Then it, it answered my question. That's why it wasn't always on because it would kill those AA batteries like there's no tomorrow. That's nuts. That's yeah. nuts. I do remember it being a huge deal. I also remember uh, it read ahead, as yeah. Tommy said. Yeah. I also remember Bass Boost being a, a, yeah, that a was really important. On a Reddit thread last night, someone said the anti-shock was when you knew you really made it. And then they said a couple years later, that became the Bass Boost was the, oh, the bass new boost status. Was like was such a yeah, status so symbol of choice. It, it was really important. Uh, and I do remember I do remember the anti-skip, like, you know, y- you could you could still cause the CD to skip if you weren't careful, you know, oh, but, yeah. um, but I remember having the anti-skip and then my seat, C- my first car didn't have a CD player, but it had the tape, it had a tape deck. So I had, I think Anita referenced it earlier. Yeah. And you'd have to have like a special place on your seat that you need. I'd, have the, <laughs> I'd have the tape in the, in the thing and then running to the, to the disc man. And I would have that on like the passenger seat and it would, yeah, exactly. Like you have to, it has to be protected it. in like a little nest where you know it's gonna it's not gonna skip too bad. Bass boost stays on yes. according to Decoy. Yes, it does. Yeah. Well folks, that's we're so happy to be back in the new year talking about music formats and in this case the format also. Um but yeah. Uh thanks for hanging out with apparently only Sam didn't know how they Tommy, you're on Sam's <laughs> butt today. You're you're really Always. you're really chewing <laughs> You're Look, really Tommy, chilling. I was an idiot, all right? I was t- I was focusing on too focused on artwork, not focused enough on the technology. That's right. That's right. Wait, they have a tape adapter for the disc man. I, wa- I kind of right want now? a disc man. Yeah, me too. Does uh, is Urban me Outfitters too. selling those yet? I don't know, but I was thinking that's it's, this is a market that we could think about it. Yeah. Wastoids yeah. branded. I got a little boombox. CDRs. Yeah, like set. Hello, set hello branded. You know, CD disc yeah, mans. You can get one of our bands to have a branded CD player, and I'll just yank one. And come with, uh, uh, well, yeah. If you want to, for more creative packaging uh, ideas, watch Adam Green on Midnight Music Review in the Attic. At one point, they talk about making a pack of cigarettes the package for your new album. I think that would that would make Sam excited. If yes. you get into it. I love cigs. Um, um, yeah. Back to Cactus Music Market. If you're in Arizona or 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 not. Yeah, if you want to come out. Come out. Drive out. Fly out. It's going to be great. Hop on a train. We're going to have a lot of fun here. February 10th. February 10th. Uh, 10 a.m. Find, find more more details uh, at uh, Hello Lincoln. Uh, 850, 850 West Lincoln. West Lincoln dot com. Dot com. And uh, you can find us at Wastoids.com. If you guys like the show, and it seems like at least a couple of you do, uh, go ahead and leave us a rating and a review over on the podcast things. We don't Sorry, say that man, often. I'm so bored. <laughs> we don't say that often, but it it does apparently help, and we could use some reviews. So go over smash there and say, that. at Tommy, go over there and smash any, and smash and subscribe. Smash that subscribe. Hit Tom, that like. <laughs> uh, Tommy, any further criticisms you have for Sam or I, please just put them in comment form. Yes. You can say anything you want, but give it five stars while you're at it, please. Yes, go even, leave a even review it, at our better, better Business Bureau page. That's right. And uh, and and then hit the FBI up to let them know that we didn't uh, violate any copy. Oh, shit. Well, never mind. We'll do it later. We'll do it next time. What? I was going to say, I'll, okay, on the way out, I'll, I'll do it. There was one more thing I wanted to talk about, one of the most uh, creative uses of the CD format. Um, do you remember when uh, the Flaming Lips did their album, Zacharia? Yes. Where it was... <laughs> four different CDs and you had to put them all together and press play at the exact same time for them to make sense together. I actually don't know if I did know that. Yeah, so they, yeah, warning, four things. So what we're listening to right now is some intrepid YouTuber did it. He, he put them all. Uh, <laughs> I'll put the bass boost on. But imagine just screwing up. And pressing, yeah. pressing play fl- just I'm like flashbacks uh, of trying to play uh, Dark Side of the Moon over uh, Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. That was hard enough. I it was pretty hard. Four, four, four Dark Side of the Moons with four copies of Wizard of Oz. Anyway, pretty interesting stuff. So, yeah. uh, thanks for hanging out with us here on Cliff Vortex. We'll be back. Yeah. We'll be back. Stand to stand by for some more Spindle soon and. Uh, 
bunch of other stuff we're working on. So yeah, killer. Cool. Thanks. Take it easy, guys. Bye.